Welcome to And One Thing More, where we take a roundabout look today at ingratitude. Ingratitude is an ugly trait. It can hurt people deeply, especially when directed against someone who has made sacrifices for us and done good to us. I think the words of Jesus contain sorrow when only one of the ten cleansed lepers returned to give thanks. Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Ingratitude is a serious sin, and scripture indicates it will be one of the characteristics of the anti-Christian spirit of the last days. A woman who didn't go out to work for some years while her children were growing up admitted she never thought twice about spending her husband's money, but then when she went out to work, she resented putting her salary into the family pot, feeling that the money she earned belonged to her. This selfishness seemed to highlight a spirit of ingratitude towards her husband, whose income had been supporting the family over many years. It suddenly dawned on her how much she'd taken it for granted. Parents may sometimes list to their offspring how much they've done for them in the hope of eliciting some sense of appreciation, for we all thoughtlessly take so much for granted. If this list is recited during a heated argument with a rising sense of annoyance and frustration because this place isn't a hotel, you know, it can provoke an unwelcome response from the teenager. I didn't ask to be born, and so it's a parent's responsibility to look after their child. Lack of gratitude makes one feel undervalued. A housewife with two kids told me that mundane household chores, such as cleaning, shopping, etc., can be so much more pleasurable if what one's done is noticed and appreciated. A word of thanks never goes amiss and can lighten the burden of the daily grind. It was G.K. Chesterton who commented, I would maintain that thanks are the highest form of thought and that gratitude is happiness doubled by wonder. What makes people ungrateful? Is it their lifestyle? Their culture? Is it that they have never had much and now think the world owes them and sees no reason at all to be appreciative because they've previously been deprived of what was their right? Is it that they've been born with a silver spoon in their mouth and have never lacked for anything, so why be grateful? This is just the status quo, nothing special. Is the ungrateful one, perhaps in marriage, taking part in a competitive dialogue, thinking, I do much more than you around here, so don't expect thanks for the little you do? Is ingratitude occasioned by jealousy? Does my own insecurity and inadequacy cause me to not thank you? Do I not realise that by withholding appreciation, I do myself no favours? How can we overcome our ingratitude? First, we must recognise the root. Like so many other sins, its root lies in pride. Consciously or unconsciously, we think we have a right to receive gifts. 
Our eyes are blind to the fact that every good and perfect gift comes from our Heavenly Father. The ungrateful do not see that it is grace, pure grace, when God supplies what we need. As Basilea Schlink wrote, we have to humble ourselves before God and ask him to forgive us our pride which has kept us from thanking him. We need to ask for a deeper repentance over our proud ingratitude. Do you remember the old Sunday school chorus, Count your blessings, name them one by one? It's a good practice to record in your Thanksgiving booklet all that you receive. It will surprise you what the Lord has done. We forget so soon, but being reminded as I read through my personal blessings booklet, fresh praise rises up in my heart and I feel so grateful to God for his wonderful goodness. I guess remembering the goodness of God and the kindness of other people is the first step towards cultivating a thankful heart. God rejoices in doing us good. At Partington at the People's Church many years ago, I learned a lovely chorus. Hasn't the Lord been kind to us? Hasn't the Lord been good? Hasn't the Lord been kind to us so much more than he should? What have we done to deserve all this? Not even half that we could. Hasn't the Lord been kind to us? Hasn't the Lord been good? Overwhelmed by such love, our hearts will be filled more and more with gratitude and joy. Doesn't scripture exhort us to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you? God wants to turn us into grateful people. He calls into existence things that are not, that do not yet exist, such as real gratitude. He can exchange a thankless heart of ingratitude, selfish and proud, and give us a loving heart of glad and cheerful thankfulness and humble, delightful gratitude. Children are taught to say thank you. As kids, when invited to a friend's for tea, we would always say on leaving, thank you for having me. The thank you letter of my day may now be superseded by the mobile phone call, email or text, but showing gratitude is not only the right thing to do, it makes others feel their efforts were worthwhile and it raises their self-esteem when praised and thanked. Being grateful can be habit-forming. One is not taught gratitude by someone insisting upon it, but by examples modelled through life by parents, peers or one's spouse. Recently, in Prayers to Start My Day by David O'Malley, a Silesian monk, I read this meditation. In our rush to achieve more, we may be blinded by ingratitude to what has already been achieved. A grateful heart recognises and names goodness wherever it is found. What we take for granted slips through our hands. What we take for granted in ourselves may be lost as a source of grace. There is a God-given energy in gratitude that is part of the rhythm of each day. We need to be thankful for the start of this day. David O'Malley then asks, in thinking about the day ahead, where will I need to be most positive and grateful today.
And one thing more. Thanklessness marks out the unbeliever who bleats. Why should I be grateful? God hasn't done anything for me. Are you sure? It might be better to save your breath. You'll need it one day. Better to give thanks with a joyful heart. This is Derek. Please phone us at the Flame Studio on 0151 643 1696 if you want to talk about issues raised in this programme. And one thing more. <laughs> 